All right, I've gone ahead and put all of these, um, milled all of these dados through to receive the um, cabinet panels or the barn door panels. I keep thinking of it as a large cabinet door, but as you can see, let's see if I can show you, they're about an inch, uh, about three quarters of an inch deep, maybe just a hair more, and then they are a little less than seven eighths of an inch wide. And again, I made those on the table saw with the dado blade, and then now you can see that I'm gonna make a fit, and they fit on these panels into the groove. Now, some of them, the, the panels tend to warp a little, you know, when they sit, but essentially that's gonna be, um, you know, that's gonna be how these are gonna actually work. All right, and then the next thing you wanna do is to create this stub tenon, um, and I call them a stub tenon because they're really short, they're stubby, they're not, I mean, you could make a tenon that goes, you know, three and a half inches or three inches into this thing if you really wanted to, um, but we're not gonna do that because it's not necessary with glue and a few pin nails into these, um, you're going to be just fine with these doors. Now, all you need to do with um, your rails are essentially stripping off a, um, you know, about three quarters of an inch of this end, and um, and you wanna make it just deep enough to remove these um, side pieces here that are created, like the walls of the channel. And when you do that, I'm gonna show you how to do that in just a minute. When you do that, you're left with something like this. So you still have the channel on the piece, but now the cheeks of the tenon have been pared away so that you are just, re just have removed this um, outside edge of the channel. And once you do that, you can see how this essentially, you know, fits together just like this. And the door will then fit in here into this slot and you'll glue these things together. And where these two intercept, after the glue, I'm gonna put a few pin nails in here just to make sure that nothing is gonna move while the glue sets up to dry. And so that's the last thing that, that we have to do at this point. Um, so I'm gonna rearrange the camera here real quick and then I'm gonna show you how I do um, a stub tenon using the same dado blade that we use to route the, the channels or the dados into the styles and rails. As you can see, I've got the dado blade in here. Now, it happens to be at the right height for um, to make the stub tenon that, to the exact width that I need. And you'll see what I'm talking about as I'm gonna do it on this one first. Um, but essentially what you're gonna do is you're gonna put a piece of sacrificial fence here, although we're not really gonna be sacrificing it. Um, you don't ever really want to take end grain of the wood and drag it across your fence. Um, that's prone to bad things happening. I happen to have a guide here. This is basically just a more fancy miter gauge. A miter gauge that you get with your saw will work just fine. It fits into the miter slot. I hold the tenon against it and I just basically put it through the saw like so. And the reason I have this piece of wood here is I'm gonna put this all the way flush with that piece of wood and then as I cut into the, um, as I start to pare down these cheeks here and the side channels, it's just gonna be free floating back here. So it's not gonna to run into anything. Typically taking end grain or, or, or um, plywood pieces that are you know narrower than they are long, um, that, that tends to have some problems when if you just put it against the fence. It's going to want to move like this and as soon as you introduce movement side to side or on an angle like this into the saw blade, you're just asking for trouble. Either you're going to get some kickback, something's going to pop back at you or, or you know, God forbid something else happen. Alright, so I'm going to cut this very quickly. Again, just for noise, I'm just going to turn on the saw and um, I'm going to go ahead now, as I said before, actually I should just mention, as I said before, I have the depth already set. The way I like to set my depth is not by measuring. Um, I will uh, start this saw blade just above the um, surface of the table and then I'll nibble away at it until just barely this channel 
wall here that I'm trying to cut away disappears. So you're just going to raise it a little, run it through both sides, because remember, you are cutting away some side of this side and then turning it over and cutting through the back side. And you want to make sure that you're not raising it too high at any one, um, at any one turn. So I just raise it, run it over both sides, check the fit. Actually, I just check to see if these little pieces fall off. Raise it again, run it through, raise it again, run it through. And as I get closer to it, um, you know, I, I'm going to be turning the saw like maybe just a hair or, you know, like a couple of degrees. And that will give me then my final measurement. And I've done that on a scrap piece already, so I know that the height is set here um, on the blade that I need for the width of my tenons. And you want these tenons to be precisely, you know, um, like snug so that they can stand there by themselves and stand up by themselves like this one's doing. You don't want them too loose where they're going to be falling out, but you don't want them so tight that you have to pound them in with a hammer. The idea is just to get that snug fit, and you'll get that snug fit if you just remove this cheek here or this, this much of the channel wall as you get closer to the actual stub portion. Okay, so now that the stub tenon is cut, we just kind of clean it up a little bit, and I'm going to test fit it. And, it. and it's a pretty darn good fit. Like I said, this stands pretty straight up. You know, you don't want any like wobbling back and forth um, to try to see that. You just want it snug enough to stand on its own. So now that this is done, I'm going to go ahead and cut the stub tenons for the rest of these rails, and then we'll be actually ready then to start assembling. Um, the panels inside the um, styles and rails. But what I'm going to do before that is I'm going to start finishing the panels. All right, before I do all the finishing, I want to take a second to explain this next step in the process. Um, I've already started finishing one of the panels, and this is the way kind of I like to do these doors. As I mentioned earlier, I like to finish the panels first because it becomes more difficult for the stain to get in and underneath the edge of the style or the rail when I'm trying to finish the thing as a whole. Now, I could do it, and that's fine. You can choose to do it that way, um, but I would rather finish the panels separately. As you can see, this one is not done yet, and I'm going to be showing you how that's done um, in the next segment. But in this segment, I wanted to um, kind of explain how I'm going to build a, uh, some sub-assemblies of these door frames um, before I put the whole thing together. And a sub-assembly, all that is, is just a, a, um, a smaller buildup that you're going to put together with other smaller buildups to make the whole. And uh, so like a carcass, cabinet carcass could be a sub-assembly of the whole cabinet. The face frame is a sub-assembly. You build the face frame, you build the carcass, and then you marry the two together and you've got your, your whole product. All right, so since I've got two doors, that's going to mean I'm going to have four of these um, styles and four of these rails, two obviously on each door. And what, I, what I'm going to do is I'm going to build these into four sub-assemblies of, a, level, of a, a letter L, which you can see here. It's just snug enough to fit so I can move it to show you, but I'm going to be making four of these letter Ls. I'm doing this for two reasons. One is I can actually sand and finish these things, um, you know, kind of as I go, which is fine. Um, and then, uh, but you don't want to finish the whole thing because you'll end up sanding these joints where the other two meet, and if you put stain on it, it's going to look like garbage. But you can, you can sand and polyurethane the edges if you want, that's totally fine. Okay, um, so one of the big reasons I'm doing this is because if you've ever assembled cabinet doors, if you've ever made cabinet doors, um, and, the, and the center panel is a solid panel, you know, it, it's, it's not difficult. It's actually pretty easy to get the panel in the styles and rails because they're so small. Um, because this is such a large, um, a large door, um, if I had glued three sides to this style and rail system together, I would almost, you know, it would be a really big struggle for me to get the panel inside, um, 
you know, the, the top bottom and, and one of the side rails, you know, sliding it down like you would a drawer bottom if you were putting that together. Um, and obviously I could wait and I could do, I could finish the panels staining and urethaning them. Um, and then I can, you know, just put these all around and glue it up. That's, that's another way you could do it. You could just put all four on, you know, each edge of the door and then clamp and glue them all together. Um, but one of the reasons I would like to do it this way is because if I make sure, and it's much easier to square up pieces when they're in this little sub-assembly fashion, if I make sure that they're 90 degrees, that each L is 90 degrees, then all the other L's are going to be 90 degrees too when I put them together. So I'll, my door will be square. Remember, if two corners of a rectangle are 90 degrees, the other two have to be 90 degrees by proxy. Um, that's some kind of math theorem or something like that, I forgot, but anyway, it's been a long time since geometry. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to glue one of these up, and then obviously you don't need to see me do that like three more times. Um, when we made these styles and rails and we grooved them out, remember that um, you know we want these things to be just snug, not overly tight because you can you could split this um, the fragile or the more fragile portions of this of the, the style here when you're slipping them in, but they should really just kind of slip in like so. And you know you've done an okay job if, you're, if the thing can stand on its own without falling to one side or the other, without wobbling in there. This is not wobbling without moving this piece too. So this is perfectly good. So in order to do this setup, I gotta make sure that I have my glue. I'm gonna need a, a square here to square everything up and I'm going to need a, a fairly large size clamp because these are going to be you know 40 inch doors this is probably about 38 right now or 39 and you're going to need a clamp larger than a three foot clamp to get this done so I'm just going to use one of the large ones that I have and then I'm also going to need some one and a quarter inch brad nails and that's going to help you know hold these tenons in place just in case I know it's kind of a habit that I do. You probably don't need it because, like I said, the glue is really good. Um, but anyway, um, then I'm going to just put some brad nails um, through the uh, um, through this more fragile part of the of the dado here, um, right through the tongue of the tenon. And you want to make sure that your nails are an inch and a half because the, or, or an inch and a quarter because these are an inch and a half thick. If, if you use an inch and a half, they'll poke out the other side. You don't really want that. All right, so without further delay, let me just go ahead and glue this up. And I'm going to put some glue on all the edges here and make sure they're really good and covered um, because you need some, some good glue up here to kind of hold it together. All right, it's dripping a little, but that's fine. And then I'm going to go ahead and put this down in here. And you'll see it squirts a lot of glue out. That's fine. I'll get that with a, a sponge later. There we go. All right, then what I'm going to do is get the glue off of this thing and put it under here with all the other glue. It's like putting gum under a desk. It just kind of helps get it out of the way. Not that I ever did that. Never did that. All right, so now that I've got this thing more or less um, in there and that the this side here facing me is flush, um, you get it flush with the top of the, of the style. And then what I'm going to do is make sure that it is at 90 degrees, and it is. Uh, most of the cuts that I make, I make sure all along the way are 90 degrees. The table saw's fence is 90 degrees to the blade. The table's 90 degrees to the blade on an upswing. So I'm not going to have any problem there. Um, and then what I'm going to do now is put this clamp on. Just gentle pressure. You don't, especially, you don't want to just, you know, squeeze the crap out of the thing. You don't really need to do that. But because it's already 90 degrees, I probably just knocked it out at 90 degrees. Uh, let me, all right, I've got that there. Everything is still a little flush. And if you don't have a rubber mallet, this is like a staple in, in my shop. I mean, I use it to close paint cans and to, you know, knock stuff into flush 
You can get a dead blow hammer if you want, that's fine. This works just fine. I don't usually mar the surface. I'm not striking it that hard. Um, and then these bar clamps are great because they do leave a space underneath here so I can slide the, the rail in here, uh, the, the square in here. And I'm already can tell I'm like out of square. So I want to make sure like I'm in square now. And I want to hold that in square while I just kind of tighten this up. Okay, checking all the time. If you have no, no real room here and this thing rubs while you're holding the, the other end of the square flush against this side, and you get that little bit of, of rubbing on there, that means you're in square. It should just, you know, be kind of like where it rubs against that thing. And you've got no gap in the front and no gap. If you start going off like this, then you're, you know you're out of square, obviously. Okay. Perfect. All right, so that's all squared up. And then I'm just going to take the brad nailer here. Put a couple of brads through the tongue of the, or through the tenon actually, um, on the cheek of this board through the tenon. That's all there is to it. I mean, it's really not a lot. And I'll do this three more times. And then what I'll do is I'll take one letter L from this piece and the other letter L, and then I'll just flip them. When I, I'll slide the panel into these two flip the L and then put another one on like that and make my, my rectangle and my door. So if you just make sure that all of these are square, you're going to have a much easier time squaring up um, the door as a whole. And um, I mean, that's how I, I look at it. Whereas if you're trying to fumble with four pieces on the door and all your clamps and measuring for square, we're still going to check for square and make any last minute adjustments. Um, but this will be much easier like it, in the end when everything is, is said and done. All right, so I'm going to get busy gluing the other three of these square pieces up. And then uh, I'll be back and I'll show you how we're going to do the finish on the panels.